welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on the structure and types of cartilage. Cartilage is a form of connective tissue, a supportive connective tissue. To understand cartilage, you'll need to know connective tissue. Now I'm going to quickly go over some of the things that you'll need for that. Connective tissue can be classified into connective tissue proper, which includes loose and dense tissue. This would be like your general connective tissue. There's embryonic connective tissue, which includes mesenchymal tissue, and that's what forms all connective tissue. It comes from the mesoderm layer of the embryo. Then there's specialized connective tissue, bone, cartilage, and blood. Bone and cartilage form supportive connective tissue. Bone is tough, obviously, but cartilage is tough too. It's firm and durable because it too functions as a supportive structure. It can cushion joints, lubricate them, and can even be flexible in areas that need it. So its functions would depend on the location of that particular form of cartilage. But whatever its function, cartilage is still connective tissue. Connective tissue in general consists of cells distributed in an extracellular matrix, consisting of fibers and ground substance. Depending on the type of connective tissue, what these three are and how they distribute would differ. In general connective tissue, the predominant permanent resident cell is the fibroblast, followed by the fibrocyte. The fibroblasts produce the protein components of the extracellular matrix. The fibers could be collagen, elastin, or reticulin. The brown substance includes glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, and adhesive glycoproteins. Since cartilage is connective tissue, it would thus also have cells, fibers, and ground substance, but with some special features. The cells of cartilage are the chondroblasts and chondrocytes, and just like all connective tissue cells, they form from the mesenchymal stem cells. The fibers are predominantly type 2 collagen, and some places have type 1 collagen and elastin. This depends on what type of cartilage we're talking about and what part of the cartilage we're talking about, but I'll get to that. The ground substance. The glycosaminoglycans include things like hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate. Chondro is cartilage, so you'll see that prefix repeating a lot whenever cartilage shows up. Proteoglycans include core proteins with the glycosaminoglycan side chain. So we have the core protein with chondroitin sulfate side chains. They are attached by link proteins to hyaluronic acid. These are proteoglycan aggregates. A common name you'd see here is agrican, but of course there are others as well. But this structure is negatively charged and its branches make it large, occupying space. This helps attract water and keeps the ground substance and so the extracellular matrix well hydrated. Thus the matrix forms this firm hydrated gel containing these cells and fibers. The proteoglycans are linked to collagen fibers. The last structure is adhesive glycoproteins. Here an important one is chondronectin. It is adhesive and attaches cells to collagen fibers. The distribution of these three components differs depending on the type of cartilage, and there are three different types, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most common and the most widely distributed. Most cartilage in the body that we talk about is actually hyaline cartilage. It's what forms the articular cartilage in movable joints. That's the cartilage on the surface of bones forming joints like the elbow, knee, hip, wrist, etc. The embryonic skeleton is actually hyaline cartilage first. It forms a temporary skeleton because it's going to get replaced with bone. That process in which cartilage gets replaced by bone is called endochondral ossification. Ossification is how bones develop. This is one way by which most bones in the body develop from a cartilaginous template. That's endochondral ossification. That's why it's got chondro in it. But in some places, hyaline cartilage doesn't get replaced by bone and it stays as hyaline cartilage for life. For example, the costal cartilage, which attaches the ribs to the sternum. The upper respiratory tract can also have hyaline cartilage, like in the rings of the trachea. 
This hyaline cartilage would include those cells, chondrocytes and chondroblasts. They come from mesenchymal cells. The process by which cartilage is formed is called chondrogenesis. The mesenchymal cells, they lose their projections and they become more rounded. They divide and proliferate. These chondroblasts can synthesize extracellular matrix components. And that extracellular matrix starts separating the cells. The cells divide and they form little groups separated by that matrix. These cells are chondrocytes and they're located in spaces called lacunae. Multiple spaces are lacunae. A single space is a lacuna. They could be single or they could be in groups. That group is called an isogenous aggregate. Now remember we're talking about the first type of cartilage and that is hyaline cartilage. The matrix immediately around the lacunae stains darker and that's called a territorial matrix, while the distant paler matrix is called the interterritorial matrix. This differentiation of cells happens from the center outwards. So the center has the chondrocytes in their lacunae with the extracellular matrix, but towards the periphery, we have the more ellipsoid chondroblasts. And remember, the chondroblasts are the ones that form the chondrocytes, the matrix, and everything else that we saw just now. The outermost mesenchyme forms dense connective tissue called the perichondrium. Now this perichondrium exists in all hyaline cartilage except for the articular cartilage. Articular cartilage that's in those movable joints does not have the perichondrium. This perichondrium has blood supply and nerve supply. The cartilage being well hydrated gets its nutrition by diffusion from the perichondrium. So the perichondrium has an outer fibrous layer and an inner cellular layer. The inner cellular layer has those chondroblasts. The fibers in the extracellular matrix of hyaline cartilage are predominantly type 2 collagen, but the perichondrium being dense connective tissue has more type 1 collagen. The chondroblasts in the perichondrium thus can form chondrocytes and they can synthesize the extracellular matrix. And that type of cartilage growth is called appositional growth, where the cells in the perichondrium give rise to more cartilage. This is versus growth by mitotic division of the chondrocytes, where the chondrocytes themselves just divide and the cartilage grows. This is called interstitial growth. So there's appositional growth and interstitial growth. These are two ways by which cartilage can grow. Now we're done with hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage is the second type, and it appears similar to hyaline cartilage, except that it's got elastic fibers in that matrix along with type two collagen. It has a perichondrium as well, but the elastic fibers make this type of cartilage more flexible and helps it return to its original shape when bent. A good example would be the external ear. Now I remember it as E for the E, so there's elastic cartilage in the external ear or the auricle. Actually the upper part of the pinna, that is elastic cartilage. The external auditory canal, the eustachian tube, and the epiglottis. Of course, there are other areas with elastic cartilage. These are just the easy ones to remember. Fibrocartilage is the last type and it is strong. It is a shock absorber and it also works like a cushion. The locations should make its functions more obvious. The intervertebral discs between the vertebrae of the vertebral column, the pubic symphysis, and the menisci of the knee joint. Now, these are some examples for fibrocartilage. It's got those chondrocytes in lacunae, but remember that fibrocartilage is very strong. And where does it get its strength from? Collagen fibers. So these cells are separated by bundles of collagen fibers, predominantly type 1 collagen. So most cartilage has type 2 collagen, but fibrocartilage has predominantly type 1 collagen. It's like a combination of hyaline cartilage and dense connective tissue and it does not have a well-defined perichondrium. This is when compared to elastic cartilage, which has a perichondrium, as does hyaline cartilage. 
except for the articular cartilage. Again, articular cartilage does not have a perichondrium. And those are the three types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Tough, supportive, connective tissue. That is cartilage. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, you can give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.